things I loved and hated on P&O's Iona. Hi guys, firstly, if you've not seen me before, my name is Danny Dallimore, and huge apologies if one side of my face looks like it's like glowing and the other side isn't. It's because right next to me, full sun, and you know what it's like if you live in the UK, if it's full sun, you don't close your curtains. <laughs> but anyway, for anyone that doesn't know, me and my partner, Connor, embarked on a seven night cruise on P&O's Iona, going around the Norwegian fjords. It was my partner's first cruise. He had never cruised before and we have some notes. There's five things that, well, to be honest, there's a lot more things we disliked and there's a lot more things we liked, but I'm not going to, this video could be two hours long. <laughs> I'm going to cram it down to five things we loved, five things we hated, and then we'll chat about them. Right, let's start on the negatives because if we get the negatives out the way, then we can end on a positive. One of the things I really didn't like on p and Iona, and honestly, before getting on the ship, I thought I was going to love this feature, but on Iona, I just didn't think it worked very well and that was Freedom Diner. Now for anyone that's not aware, basically when, you, when you're on a cruise, you have traditional style cruising and then you have the freedom option. Generally, a traditional cruising would give you two set dining times. Generally, they're usually about 6 p.m., 8 p.m. or 6.30, 8.30. They're usually around that time, depending on which cruise line you're with. Most of P&O's older ships actually still have the traditional dining where it's set times and then they have so many people that can do freedom dining. But on Iona, it's all freedom dining. And yeah, on paper, Eat when you want, go when you want, sounds perfect. But it just didn't seem to work on Iona, let me tell you why. And I'm just noticing my face is getting brighter by the second. <laughs> and this is the squeakiest chair I've ever sat on. What is going on with this chair? Listen to it. It's so squeaky. So when getting on the ship, I, I honestly thought when, when someone says to you, freedom dining, I just imagine you just show up when you want. But it's not like that on Iona. Basically, they have an app, which isn't really an app, it's a web page, and it doesn't really work well. And if PO ever see this video, which I don't think they're ever gonna, but if they ever see this video, please get an app. Like, we're in 2022 now, guys. Like, have an app. Like, other cruise lines have an app. Like, it's just this random web page that works sometimes and doesn't work others. It's not good at all, honestly, it's really bad. But when you're on it, you open up this web page and then you have to book which restaurants you wanna eat at. But sometimes you click on it and then the web page will just like refresh and literally it does see on that web page if you click off it your reservation you'll have to restart a reservation because basically when you're on the, when you're on I don't want to call it an app because it's definitely not an app but when you're on the web page you basically have to select which restaurant you want to eat at and then it'll tell you how many people are in the queue and then you have to wait quick hack though to this if you actually just go down to the restaurant you can just ask for a table and if there's one available the staff are really happy to to sit you down at a table it actually it really affected our first night if where i didn't actually vlog our first meal because it just totally really stressed us out we were just got on the ship and on that first night con actually loaded up the app and he was just he was saying it was like carnage all the restaurants were like 30 40 50 people in the queues and we really worried about were we actually going to be able to eat and i said to con don't worry we're on a cruise there's going to be restaurants available but after speaking to fellow passengers so many passengers said the same thing it, what a nightmare that what a nightmare that web page is and it's such a shame and I really hope Pino will fix it we've got to remember Pino the AI owner's a new ship and you know it'll come into fruition but yeah freedom dining just for me didn't work I know I, I know like some people absolutely love freedom dining and I've spoke to a lot of passengers I run my own blog page and I've spoke to a lot of people and a lot a lot say they love it some say they don't I think it's very mixed I think it's a very mixed opinion some will love it some will hate it for us it just didn't Really work another negative and I don't usually do videos like this <laughs> so it's just you for me hang on let's get the tea oh well it's actually a coffee actually it's a it's a Nescaf coffee <laughs> but yes another negative was the entertainment on board now for me right I love a game of bingo I love a quiz I love going to some of the chats but con my partner he is not really into that sort of entertainment and I don't know we we just hoped we we really really hoped there would just be something on there for con once getting off the ship, we found that actually there wasn't, unfortunately. And I kind of regretted booking the Iona based on that, just because Con had a brilliant cruise, but entertainment-wise was bad for him. I must chat about the show Rise, which was on the, in the Sky Dome. 
Can someone let me know who the target audience is for that show? Because at first I was like, oh, this is right up my street. It's very Disney. If anyone doesn't know, like, I love Disney. Behind me, <laughs> Florida. I'll literally go there. I'm actually going tomorrow, like, when this... Well, when this video's out, I'll actually be gone. I'll actually be in Florida. But yeah, and the entertainment, there was a show called Rise, which basically was 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 people dressed up in, like, costumes of birds. And then this big bird comes out, and then there's a, bit, a big show. I'll not ruin it for anyone. It's the reason why I didn't include it in the cruise vlogs. But honestly, all the way through, I was just like, who's this target audience? Like, for a P&O ship, I was thinking, this, like, if it was, was, was on Disney, I'd be like, oh, this makes sense. But with p &O just didn't make sense. And I know a lot of the passengers who were around me were saying, what on earth am I watching? Like, what is this? And I don't know, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Like, what is Rise? Who's the target audience for? And yeah, we just really didn't get it. We honestly just did not get it. Yeah. Another negative. The retreat. Oh my god. Right. So this is this is a really big negative for me and Con because right, Con is a strict vegetarian. Really doesn't um, eat. A, well, in fact, doesn't even eat a lot of veg. He's a vegetarian that doesn't eat a lot of veg. And we basically had toured the ship, seen the retreat, went down to the spa and spoke to a colleague, and said, listen. We've seen the retreats up at the top. How much is it for the week? It was 99 for the week, or it was 149 if you booked it the next day, or it was 39.99 per day on our cruise. Obviously, I, I can imagine the flights fluctuates depending on where you're going. And the, we were sold the retreat. The lady had said, oh, there's loads of food up there. There's, there's loads of snacks. It'll be amazing for you. And especially if you've got a, veg, a vegetarian partner, perfect because they'll be able to bring snacks and stuff. We didn't get that ex experience with the retreat. On Upon arrival, it looked amazing. We, I got on the jacuzzi. It was nice. But then for the further three days of the sailing, the jacuzzi was down. And then for food and stuff, the menus were never really, were never really fit for purpose for Connor. But then, secondly, it was never really staffed that much. So we would go up there, and I think the staffing hours were like 10 a.m. to like 4 p.m. So if you went up in the morning, there was no one there. And if you went on the afternoon, there was no one there. So if you wanted want to go up there after set sail, there was no staff. And I, that was one of the that was one of the biggest negatives, I would say, about the retreat. And we actually did get a full refund. Even trying to get that full refund was hard because the jacuzzi was down for three days, so we couldn't use the retreat. This was the thing, we couldn't use it. But then, once we seen the food menus that just topped it off because we thought this was a really good opportunity for for con you know because he's a strict veggie but it just didn't work and pino ended up giving us a full refund for it which we really really appreciate and we didn't use it they actually offered for us to still use the retreat even though we had been given a full refund and we just decided not to use it further on just because we didn't feel right using it especially when there's other paid guests number four the Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh God, right, this one I'm gonna keep nice and short and sweet because I feel like this, for most guests, will not affect them. But unfortunately for me, I'm self-employed, I have to work when I'm on holiday, unfortunately. I have to work 365 days a year. If you're self-employed, you understand it. And for me, when I go away, I need access to a running internet connection to be able to, to work, obviously. Oh, when you're at sea, you don't get phone signals, so the only thing you can rely on is the Wi-Fi. But unfortunately, on this cruise, the Wi-Fi was non-existent, and honestly, I, I felt awful because that reception desk I had to go to a few times to speak about the Wi-Fi because there were so many issues with the Wi-Fi. Now, one of the things I would be very mindful of, guys, and especially if you're doing a Norwegian Fjords cruise, P&O are fully aware that the Wi-Fi doesn't work on certain days. When you sail out of Alden, the Wi-Fi just will not work and if you sail out of Hellasilt the Wi-Fi doesn't work because when you're in the fields and you're surrounded by the mountains there's like some sort of signal block as he said so they actually ended up refunding us certain days back off our weeks package because I think they ended up refunding about £30 back because of the Wi-Fi not working so just be mindful if you're paying for a week's package just be mindful that the Wi-Fi doesn't work on certain days because yeah, it, it, it was a it was a nightmare. And my biggest recommendation, if you're watching this and thinking, oh my god, wait, what am I going to do if I need to work while I'm on holiday? Well, you report 
you'll get full Wi-Fi, uh, you'll get full signal on your phone if you've got a package. And to be honest, in the ports we had no issues with Wi-Fi. It was just when we were on the ship setting sail, it was it, yeah, it was it was difficult. But like I say, I know that won't affect every single person. So yeah, just be mindful if you need Wi-Fi. Then yeah, just think ahead. And then number five, this one's quite a funny one for me because I did mention it at the end of our vlog series if you've watched it. But the toilet doors. So I never thought I'd be complaining about toilet doors on a cruise, <laughs> but I, but I am on this one. So. So for some reason, and, and I get it, I get it, P&O have opted for electronic doors, but right, sometimes, when I say electronic doors, I mean in the public areas, but for some reason, when you like, when you walk into these toilets, the doors don't always close. So sometimes you stand in there and trust me, if you need that toilet quick, you're best off running to your, your cabin because sometimes these doors take a while to close and there's been times where I'm like just waiting. But a very unsatisfying moment happened on our cruise where literally the, the doors close, I'm thinking I'm all safe, start, you know, using the toilet, standing up <laughs> and literally the door just randomly opens and that's because what you need to do right is when you're in the room you need to tap the button but i don't this doesn't make sense to me because when the doors close sometimes you'll walk up them they'll not open but then sometimes you'll walk up to them and then they'll open so basically what you need to do is when the doors close you need to tap the button so it stays sealed but honestly i just i don't understand why they didn't just use like you know like what they do in like malls and shopping centers where it's just like a walk around or like what they did on older ships at I kind of get why they're doing it. It's like 21st century technology and it's good for like contactless and stuff. But I just don't feel like it worked on our sailing. Unless someone wants to let me know in the comments if I was just doing it all wrong. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I was just doing it all wrong. So that's all the negatives out of the way. Let's talk about the pros because there was plenty of brilliant and amazing things that I absolutely loved on Pino's Iona. And the first one, as always, is the service. Number one, service. The staff, the crew, the captain, the, the Pino service team when we docked on the ship can't do enough for you. Honestly, they really, really can't. Sometimes you'll read bad and bad articles and stuff on p and I honestly have not had a single fault. If I had an issue with something that was happening on that ship, they fixed it. If there was something not right, they fixed it. Honestly, the crew, the service team, the, oh bless the, the servers and the waiters and the housekeepers and all of them were just amazing. We had the loveliest housekeeper that just kept our room lovely and bless me, he was so nice and we had so many nice chats. The service team when you're eating were just honestly amazing and uh, like especially because I'm traveling with a picky eater with Con obviously he's a picky eater he's a veggie they were just amazing and that falls perfectly into number two which falls into food food honestly again brilliant the, the team were just always accommodating I'm on a low carb diet I, I say I'm on a diet guys like literally <laughs> I'm trying to be <laughs> I'm trying to be on this diet. But yeah, I'm on, I'm on a low carb diet and p and are always so accommodating. To be honest, all cruise lines are, but I always find p and a little bit more specially towards, like I've never felt a bit awkward just sit like for example, I don't mind sharing this. So on our cruises, I was having the salmon um, with, uh, basically if you order a salmon at the sh on the cruise, you get salmon, potatoes, and veg. And what I was asking for is the salmon, but to be taking the potatoes off and extra veg. And then I was quite often saying, would I be cheeky and ask for two, these two pieces of salmon and then just veg, um, just so I'm not hungry <laughs> after my meal. And all the time they were so accommodating. I did feel like a bit of a pig getting two pieces of salmon. <laughs> But it is a salmon, it's not It's not that villain. Honestly, they were just always so accommodating and honestly for Con, who is a veggie, if you're traveling with a picky eater, someone who is not massively into certain foods, have no worries because P&O will accommodate. And let me know in the comments if you've ever had any issues with the food. I, I know some people may expect me to put the food on like the negatives, but I'll, I, honestly, the food on p and I find really, really nice. Number three on the positives, outdoor areas on p and Iona. Oh my God, how many jacuzzis? There's like 18 jacuzzis outside or something. You are not gonna struggle to find at least somewhere you can walk around. And this is the thing, don't pay for the retreat. Honestly, it, Quick one, let's quickly go back to a negative. If you think, oh my God, I'm gonna pay for the retreat so I have my own private area, and you don't need it, you honestly don't need it, unless you're in the Caribbean and everyone's outside, 
On that Norwegian Fjords cruise, there were so many opportunities where me and Con were walking outside, even on sunny days, and the ship wasn't that busy on the outside, and we were on a busy sailing. I couldn't tell you how many passengers were on board, but I know it was a very busy sailing because everyone kept saying to us, um, who had cruised on Iona recently, before this sailing, is how busy our ship was. And honestly, there were still loads of outdoor areas. There was loads of times we were passing jacuzzis and they were empty. So honestly, outdoor space is brilliant. I can imagine like if you're someone who just wants to read a book in the sun, you don't have a balcony, maybe you've got an inside cabin and you just want to be outside reading a book or you just want to have a nice drink maybe at the after the ship or somewhere on the ship where you can get some outdoor sun. Iona has got plenty of it. So yeah, don't be afraid there. And then number four, this kind of falls into the previous one, plenty of seating. Honestly, Iona has so much seating in the atrium. I couldn't believe how many empty tables there was. Bearing in mind we were on a very busy sailing, is what I kept hearing. And there was so much empty seating. Talking about empty seating, this seat, apologies if you can hear a squeak. I think it's, I think the seat's like buckling beneath my knees. <laughs> the seat's like, oh my God, what's happened? You've just came off a seven day cruise. <laughs> let's stay professional here, let's stay professional. No, honestly, loads of seating on board Iona. You've got in the atrium, there's three decks and you've got three decks of seating, loads of room, loads of nice places to like hide, you know, like if you just want to be in the like corner somewhere and just have a couple of drinks and you just want to chill and maybe read the, read the newspaper or read a book again or something where you just want your own private space. You're not going to have an issue in Iona. They're, honestly, there was so much. I literally cruised on the Disney, Disney magic ship and then I've obviously cruised on MSC and other cruise lines. Honestly, I've never seen so much seating on any other cruise line, like compared to Iona, there was just so much. And then number five, which is my final pro, the cabins. The cabins, honestly, on Iona are so nice. Bearing in mind, like I've said, it was Connor's first cruise. He honestly was blown away by the cabins. I think Con had this vision of the Titanic. Like, obviously, Con's watched the Titanic. He's never cruised before. So he just had this vision of, like, a really small little cabin, toilet in the same room, like, like with no, like, privacy. Like, he just imagined, like, something completely different. And when he walked into the cabin, he couldn't believe how nice it was. He was just blown away by the space. That's one of the things I will say. As someone who takes a lot of luggage, carries all these cameras and laptops and stuff to, to work while I'm away, uh, I never felt that there wasn't enough room. What I did notice on the Iona though, is there wasn't as much cabin space, like in the drawers and stuff, there wasn't a lot of space there. And also as well, like if you have like long pants, the pants will touch the bottom, so like roll them up twice. I have heard about like people's long dresses and stuff touching the floor because the 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 hangers, like it's quite a low wardrobe space. But other than that, honestly, it was lovely, and we were very lucky. We were in cabin one hundred one or seven, right at the front of the ship, literally at the front, and we had such a long, extra long cabin. It was honestly, it it was it was amazing. Honestly, it it really really was, and yeah, I absolutely loved it. And I suppose that's it. That's the five things I hated and loved with P&O's Iona. Please don't think the five things that I hated are like world ending. I don't think I would choose to sail on Iona again. There's a whole board of reasons, whole board of reasons, you like what I did with that? <laughs> There's a whole load of reasons why I don't think I would sail on Iona again. No, honestly, for me, it was just on an evening. I just felt like there was lacking of entertainment that suited mine and my partner's needs. But I'm going to be honest, we've seen people drinking to late at night we've seen people having the best time discos and stuff so i think that was just us overall i think the iona is an amazing ship i think p and o have absolutely nailed it i'm very excited for avia who is coming out later this year you may see me on the maiden you may not i'll leave that for instagram <laughs> You may see me on it. It'd be very interesting actually because Arvia's got like the golf, the crazy golf and stuff coming. So I'd be very interested to see what that would be like compared to Iona because it looks like it's a bit more family orientated Arvia compared to Iona. I don't know. I'm interested to see that. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions in regards to the five negatives or the five pros, let me know in the comments. If you have any other like pros that you want to mention or any more negatives that you want to mention, put them in the comments. I'm always interested to hear and it's always nice creating a dialogue just for like other cruisers who are coming on the Iona and they're thinking, okay, what do I need to be thinking about? 
And if also, if you've liked this video, make sure you smash that like button. And if you haven't clicked subscribe already, hit that subscribe button. Just to let you know, we are going on Royal Caribbean Independence of the Seas. It literally, like when you are watching this, it'll be tomorrow. But we are going on Independence of the Seas. So we'll be having another cruise vlog series and then maybe another one of these five pros and five cons to chat about. And yeah, if you're into Florida stuff as well, I'm going to Florida, so it'll be loads of Disney vlogs and Universal vlogs and stuff. If you're into that, obviously, I know not everyone is, but if you are, then then yeah, make sure you stay tuned to hit that subscribe button. But anyway, guys, that has been me, Danny Dalamo. Oh my God, I'm not gonna do that again. That's really cringe. Anyway, guys, that's been me. I'll see you soon, guys. Enjoy your days. Enjoy whatever you're doing. Bye, see ya.